Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back with our friend 69 Volkswagen Beetle. Today we're working on the back wheels. We've got the brakes to do and the bearings. I think it's gonna be kind of a dirty, dirty job. I've already got the drum off here, as you can see. So I wanna go back a little bit in time and show you, I have a very cool tool to pull the drums off the back of these cars. It's a little more involved to get into the brake hub on the back of these cars. And that's because we have this big, huge, 36 millimeter castle nut that we have to take off. Now the torque spec on this is 220 foot-pounds of torque. So that's 220 pounds at 12 inches or at 24 inches, you're still at 110 pounds right at the end of the wrench. So you can use a large breakover bar, but you're probably gonna have to put a long cheater pipe on it as well. And you wanna make sure you have a very, very strong impact 36 millimeter socket to get that thing off. But I have a different tool that I wanna try. I've never used it before on this. and I think it would be pretty cool. And that is when of these guys. So these are a torque multiplier and gives you nine times torque. So it's a nine times multiplier or in other words, you only have to put one ninth of the torque in to get to where you need to be. The difference here is that if you're going to use the big huge socket and your breakover bar cheater pipey thing, you want to loosen it while it's on the ground. You never want to loosen it when it's up unless you have a big impact gun or something that you can take it off with. If you're going to do it the man way you want to make sure all four wheels are on the ground or it could you could totally upset the car if it's in the air we're going to actually be taking it off with the car up on the jack stands because we're not going to put any external force really to speak of on the car itself so kind of standard procedure we're going to get the wheel off and we're going to get the car up and get it on a jack stand and see if we can get this nut off with this guy with the wheel off our next step is to pull out this big cotter pin here so what we do is we take our wheel bolts and we attach this gear ring here to the hub There we go. The way it works, see, we put this guy over the top of this and then we make sure that the gears are meshing up here at the top. Then it's just a matter of rolling it across the top of the gear rail here and loosening this guy up. All right, there we go. We're loosening our castle nut, look at that. We'll reposition this back over here. It's actually pretty loose at this point. There we go. Now this guy is super sweet for getting this stuff off, but it's actually even sweeter for putting it back on because how do you know if you have 220 foot pounds of torque? You just, nobody, you know, you just don't. You have to kind of calculate how's your weight, how long is your cheater pipe, whatever. Since this is a nine to one, all you have to do is take 220, divide it by nine, set your torque wrench, and just crank away until it goes to click and you know you've got it right. So this is great, I love this thing, it's really cool. It also works for taking the gland nut off the flywheel on these cars as well. There's other little bits for it that you can kind of hook up and there's another gear rail on here that actually hooks up with the gear that's around the outside of the flywheel and it works great for that as well. Now the reason this torque is so high is because this inner axle is splined and this drum just sits on that spline and if that gets loose at all and it's not tight enough you can actually just completely destroy the splines on the drive and that would be a very very bad thing. So that's the reason for the high torque on these. Before you pull your brake drum off there's one thing you might have forgotten and that is to release the parking brake. You'll We'll never get this thing off if the parking brake's on. So let me go double check and make sure the parking brake is off on the car. All right, our parking brake is off. That's a good sign. I do still have the car in gear, but at least the parking brake is off. There we go. First, let's start by inspecting the actual brake drum. We're feeling inside here for any gouges or any bad marks and also a big lip here that would signify that we're kind of at the end of the life of this thing. It feels okay. Next, what we're looking for is right there at the base of the shaft. We're looking to make sure that the seal is good and we don't have any leakage. It looks great, no problem there. That looks really good. Next, we take a look at our brake cylinder up here. 
I do see a little bit of schmutz, but I don't think that's actually leaking at all. We'll check it a little more carefully. But the rest of this looks good. How do our pads look? They look very good as well. They're an even thickness all the way around. That's a good sign that they're sort of in adjustment, I suppose. What about the condition of our springs and the little clips and things that are holding the springs on? They look good. And this little guy here is our parking brake cable. I want to make sure that's one attached, not broken. Looks like somebody's probably been in here working on these brakes not too awfully long ago. You can take a look at these adjusters down there as well. Yep, looks pretty good. Our little spacer bar there, spreader bar, looks like it's in good shape. All right, that all looks good. All right, let's see if we've got any leakage underneath here. Oh, it looks nice and dry. And on this side, uh-oh, look at this. We've got a bunch of fluid here. Yeah, that's not good. Well, that's a little disappointing. Looks like this cylinder is just not in good place. Just like the one, the front one wasn't in a good place either. So we're gonna have to either repair it or replace it. Since we're gonna have to pull this thing apart, I am gonna take a bunch of pictures. The rears are a bit more complicated because they've got the parking brake and such here and this little spanner bitty up here. And you wanna take a look at your springs and where they're all plugged in. So I'm gonna take a bunch of pictures of it. Now this car has CV joints, so I don't see any leakage at all here on this seal, which is great, but I do really want to check out those bearings because the ones in the front were terrible. So these could be a mess as well. Let me go ahead and pull the rest of the brakes off here first so we can get all this stuff out of the way. Now you're probably wondering, how do you know that your bearings are bad? That's a great question actually, and I've had a little trouble figuring that out. Now it's not a great idea at this angle really to spin the axle too awfully much. It puts a little bit of strain on these CV joints and I'm not feeling like rumbling or anything in this thing. But our front bearings were so bad on this car, it's a possibility. And then there's something else. So check out this play. You hear that? And then this way as well. So it's both directions, up and down. So we just don't think there should be that much play and that much sort of clicky clicky clanky clanky noise. It just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't sound good to me. So since we're in here and we're kind of at this stage, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and replace these bearings. It'll give us a little bit of peace in mind. We've got new bearings, they're not super expensive. It's just kind of a lot of crummy work though. But maybe it'll be helpful if uh, you're working on your car and you need to replace these bearings. In order to get the CV joints off properly, there's this kind of a special tool. These are called 12 point or triple square. They're just, they look like just a spline really is what they look like. This is an eight millimeter. If you try to use a hex in there, you risk rounding off the inside of it and then you're really in for a mess trying to get those things off. So just make sure you have the right tool before you try and get those guys off. Before we use our super special new tool for this, we wanna make sure that these bolts, the inside of them are completely clean. So I've got a pick here and you kind of go into each one of these. Make sure that there isn't any dirt or grease and grime in here. You just want to make sure that they're completely clean inside. There we go. See the dirt coming out of that? Because the last thing you want to do is strip one of these things out. Maybe hit them with a little bit of spray as well. We'll test fit the tool here. Yep, fits in great and it's nice and tight. That's good. Well, I'm actually a little out of order here. The problem is that once you have the wheel off and you have the brake apart, there's no way to really lock this axle shaft down because the differential just spin whether it's in gear or not. So I put the drum back on and just quickly refitted the pads and pulled the parking brake on it and adjusted my little stars to lock it back up again. It's kind of stupid, but we've got to lock that wheel down so we can get these bolts loose. All right, let's go ahead and pull these guys off. We 
really don't want anything getting into the back of the CV joint here. So I've got a bag and I'm gonna pull it out. See the grease there. And I'm gonna put a bag around it. Try and keep it as clean as possible. In addition, we're gonna need that guy out of the way. So you can either zip tie it up here or use a bungee cord, whatever you want to. Just hold this guy up and out of the way. At this point, we should be able to pull our axle out. Now I'm gonna remove this front cover here as well. I've already loosened this up and taken it off, but they're just 14 millimeter bolts. are kind of a weird size, but pull these guys off. You know, when you take this guy off, there's a big spacer in here and this spacer, has a bevel on it and flat on this side, bevel on this side. It's very important that this goes back in the same way. This bevel rides up against the bearing race here. Now this is also the surface in which our seal runs on. And this is our seal here, and this guy would be sitting inside here like this. So it's important to sort of take a look at this and make sure that it's no gouges or scrapes or anything. This looks fine, so we're good there. Obviously, we're, we're gonna be replacing this big seal in here as well. Now, something else to note here is this little teeny, see this O-ring that's up here, that guy there? Those things are actually pretty hard to find. You should have one up there. It's just a secondary, like a dust seal for this big plate as it sits on there. It's just really a dust seal. But this is kind of a little bit hard to find. The older kits, remember I talked about the older style axles, the axle tubes. They also have a gasket like this as well, but it's actually pretty important. And I think it's a little bit thicker than this one. This one should be relatively thin. With that front plate loose, we should be able to just push this axle backwards. There's nothing really holding it on. There we go, just need a little convincing. Then take a look at the condition of our axle. It doesn't look too bad, it looks a little, oh, it's hard to say. It looks like it's just sort of wiping off. Maybe that's just grease. Some grease here. It's a little dry. I would have expected a lot more grease in this. I don't see much, and what I do see seems pretty thin, but uh, the rest of the axle looks like it's in decent shape. There's an inner and outer bearing race. The outer bearing race on this side over here is roller bearings. On the inside, it's ball bearings. And here from the other side, that we can see that big spacer that's in there that we need to get out, and our seal back here. All right, we wanna pull this guy out. This is just another spacer. Take a look at the inside of that. It's highly beveled on this side. You see that? And not on this side. So the flat side is gonna go up against the bearing in this case, and this beveled side is gonna go to the inside or towards the transmission. Now we need to get this seal out. I have my fancy dancy seal puller that I've used in a few other episodes to get seals out. This thing works great. It sort of tucks itself underneath there and you've got this little bit that you can move around and place as a lever or lever to get this thing off. So let's see if we can get this guy to work. It's always a little weird setting it up. There it goes. Holy cow. Wow, that little guy was in there. This is awesome, this thing works great. It works best if you've got your shaft still in there. It gives it something to hold this thing against as it's pulling. If you hold it correctly, I guess it does kind of work. So it's, it's awesome. This is what we're after. We need to remove this ring clip. It's a bear. To get this ring clip off, it's super serial. And I have a pair of ring pliers here, but these are obviously pretty darn wimpy, huh? So I don't think they'd be up to the challenge. So I bought a better set. This guy looks pretty beefy. So let's see if it works. And there we go. And it came out easily enough. I've heard people have actually destroyed these clips getting them out. The right tool for the right job, and I'm glad I ordered a new set of these guys. Since the spacer is still in here, I'm gonna see if I can kind of use the spacer itself to try and push that back bearing out. I've got a socket here and my rubber mallet. This is the spacer in here between the two, which I'm gonna try and use this socket with my mallet and pound that other bearing out the other side.
And there it goes. And now we can remove our spacer. Look at that. It's got plenty of grease on it. That's good. And there's lots of grease in here. That's a good thing. Doesn't feel like it's got any real play in it. So I'm wondering if it's our outer race that's bad. Well, I take that back. Yeah, as I'm spinning it, yeah, I can feel some vibration in it. Yeah, it should be totally smooth. And I can feel a little bit of rumble. Okay, now this guy has to come out. Let's pull out some of this grease. We can kind of get some of this grease out of here. There's an awful lot of grease in here. Not a bad thing, that's what it's supposed to be. All right, well, we'll try to get our 36 millimeter in there and pound that guy out. Hopefully, it will grab hold of it and take it out. <laughs> Every once in a while, it just comes right out. Look at that, it just popped right out. So that, that was pretty easy. I was all set, to, you know, I was loaded for bear with this guy and it just popped right out. Woohoo! Now the next bit is just the fun bit of cleaning all of this out. So let's go ahead and get this completely clean. There's still a bunch of grease in here and we'll get this cleaned out. Now, something to note, look at these notches. There's a notch here, there's a notch there, there's also a notch up here and another notch up there. That's for extracting these bearings. So I pounded them out, but I didn't, I didn't realize these were in there. I, I had read that they are, I just completely forgot. So to pull this bearing out, you would come in from this side, stick your screwdriver through here and bang on both sides here and knock that bearing out. Same deal from the other side, you go boom, boom, and we'll do that on the other side. It'll make it a lot easier. This is probably my least favorite bit on all of this. It's a lot of work and it's just obviously greasy and grimy and Heidi has me in my little hobo suit for today because I'm just covered with grease. And the minute you start grinding away on stuff, it splatters everywhere, it goes in your face. Thus the safety glass is super duper important. But I wanted to ask you guys, what do you use to clean parts? I have this stupid little plastic bucket and you can see some of the schmutz in there. And I'll use a little bit of this purple stuff or the super green or something, maybe finish it up with some bright clean. But it's really important important that these parts get completely cleaned and they're pretty bad and pretty schmutzy and I think I've got them pretty well cleaned up. I think they look great. So what do you guys use? Do you use a little bucket like this or something or do you actually have a parts washer? It's something we're maybe looking into. I don't have much room in my garage here for a big stand-up parts washer but I think there are some you can set on your tabletops. Let me know if you've used any of those, if you're something that you like and also what cleaning fluid do you use in those things as well? Is it mineral spirits or whatever you're using in those? That would be super helpful. Leave your comments down below. Let me know. I think that would be uh, super helpful for everyone else as well. I think that would be great. This last piece here, which is the bearing and seal cover that goes on the outside of the whole wheel hub there. It's just made out of cast iron and it's kind of, it's clean, but it's pretty rusty. So I'm gonna throw it on the wire wheel on the bench grinder and take off a bit of this rust. It just looks a little bit better. I just thought it'd look a little bit nicer when I put it on. With all of our parts nice and clean, we can get back to the car. We have all of our parts cleaned here and our new bearings and boy, Oh, that is just silk. These are wonderful. And the roller has its own little center hub here and it feels really nice as well. Well, our first step is going to be to pack these bearings, which is the same thing we did with the front wheels. We just want to pack these guys with grease and make sure that they're completely greased all the way through. As we mentioned before, the order of all of this is very, very important but it may not be exactly the order of assembly either. So I think in looking at all this, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the inboard ball bearing in first and then we'll lock it in with our circlip. And then the only thing between that and the outer bearing out here, our roller bearing, is this spacer. So I think that'll be a good start. The first thing I wanna do is to pound in our inner bearing, that's our ball bearing. This is the old one. And remember the trick we did up front with the races? Well, we did the same thing with this because this is my biggest socket that I have. It's not going to contact this outer edge very well at all. And I'm afraid if I use this to push in the new bearing, I'll put too much stress on the balls and I could break them. So what I wanna do is use this guy. I've ground it down. It will fit in very easily in here. I'll just slide right in now. 
See that? It just goes right in. And I'm going to use this guy as a drift to push in our new bearing. I really like this idea. I think it's kind of cool. Now with the ball bearing, there's really not much difference in the orientation of these other than I like to set them up so that the from the outside, you can actually read the designation on the bearing itself, which is usually in the outer race. We'll put a little bit of grease right in here just to kind of help this along a little bit. All right, and you can kind of barely see there's some writing here on the outside. So we're gonna push our bearing in this way. I'm actually gonna clean the plastic part of this hammer because it's a little bit dirty and I don't wanna be banging dirt into my bearing. There we go, quite a bit cleaner. Making sure our hands are clean as well. And we'll start this guy in. Yeah, it's going in nicely. We can now use our old bearing and start to use this as a drift. There we go. All right, look at this. You can see our slot there. With our bearing all the way home, next step is to install this big circlip. Use our super awesome ring clip pliers here. Okay, make sure it sits all the way in. It's slot, looks good, all the way around. Yeah, that looks great. All right, well that bearing's in. With the inner bearing in, next thing I'm gonna do is fill this cavity with grease and lay in our spacer. This can go in either way, so no, no problem there, but we have to make sure we put it in inside here before we set our outer bearing. So you just don't wanna forget that. All right, here we go. I'll add a bunch of, bunch of grease in here. So we're gonna put this guy in now. It's just gonna sort of float in here. We're not gonna worry too much about it. We'll just kind of hang out-ish. That looks pretty good, I think. Now my next question was the orientation of the roller bearing because it's not symmetric. It has a removable, like we talked about this removable insert, but on the back of it, it has the clip for all the little cylinders in there. And looking at this and going, looking on the web, I couldn't find anything super definitive, but I believe once again, that we want our inscriptions on the outside of the bearing facing outward so that we could read them. And I believe this little plastic snap guy here that holds the cylinders in is going to go on the inside. You can see the inscriptions and things on the outside there. I'll place this guy in. Now remember this one came out pretty easily so I, I expect it'll go in pretty easily too. Okay, that's the sound we're looking for. And remember this bearing sits a little proud. You can see it sitting out just a little bit. That's correct, that's normal. So remember I mentioned the earlier style axles, the swing axle they call it. Here's a kit, this is actually for swing axles. And you think, well, why did you buy that? Well, because it comes with a number of things. It comes with this big O-ring that we need to replace that goes around the outer hub here. It also comes with a seal. So, and the seal's the same size. It's just a little bit more narrow, but it's basically the same size seal that you would use on these. So it's kind of nice. And then it also comes with a big cotter pin. So that's for our big castle nut that goes on the end of the axle. I'm not sure if this was really the correct way to go, but it had a few pieces that I needed and I couldn't find this O-ring anywhere. So I had to buy an additional grease seal because we have two, one on the inner and one on the outer, and this kit only has one. Next, I'm gonna bang in our inner seal. Goes right over here. Next step is gonna to be to assemble our stub axle here. But a word of caution, because this just stopped me up and caused like an hour of my time. You should only have two spacers. One that's got a conical bevel on it, and then the other one's got a concave bevel on the inside of it. Those are the two you should have. If you end up with a round sleeve like this, and you're thinking, oh, well, that looks exactly like a spacer. It's not. What it is, is the old center to the roller bearing that you took out. And so that's what screwed me up. I put it on the axle shaft and it wouldn't go in all the way, surprise, surprise, because it's not supposed to be there. And it took me a while to get it back off and it was a big old mess. Just 
kind of be cautious of that. Well, your next question is going to be, okay, that's awesome. Which one goes where? Since they're so different, they're not that hard to figure out. The bottom of the axle here, can you see this little fluted end there? That fits inside the concave bit on this spacer. Now, before you kind of put everything on this, I would put a little bit of grease on it. I think just makes life a little bit easier because we're gonna have to slide this through our new bearing races and just sort of coating it with a bit of grease just to really help it along. Now we can take our spacer with that concave bit on it, put it face down here, drop it all the way down on the bottom. There we go. It might kind of get a little fussy on you, but it will go down. There it goes. Our next step is just to insert the stub axle. Just kind of goes in here like this. It might get a little fussy on you. And watch your bearing on the other side. Remember that sleeve that's in the roller bearing on the other side, it can come flying out. So just be careful, have something underneath it to catch it if it does, or just hold your hand over here. A little light taps all the way around with the rubber mallet might help as well. Okay, we're pretty close here, and I can feel our run on the outside is sort of pushing out. We're close, we're almost there. You can see our race here is popped out a little bit. That's probably because of these splines. A little 30 millimeter here. There we go, that's better. Our next spacer is this one that's conically shaped here, and this part of it the conical part of it goes up against this bearing race here. So it goes on like that. You can pull this old seal off here. And I'll see the difference in the thickness. This one, the original one, is quite a bit thinner, but it's also pretty weird too. It wasn't on all the way and I think it got pinched. So it looks a little strange. We'll see if we can fit this one. Goes all the way up on the outer lip there. Happier, maybe? Okay, great. Now, I still have questions about this particular gasket going on. It really is from the old kit, and I can't find anything that says this should be on there. I mean, I found some posts here and there. Oh yeah, you should have it. Most cars don't, that sort of thing. But looking in the exploded view, I don't see it. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and install it. If it's a problem later, I can pull it out. Now, also looking at this flange here, you can see it sort of cuts in, has like little hips that cut in on the side. Those go down. So not like this, but like this. And one other way to know is there's a little hole down here at the bottom. That's kind of for this down here. And you can see there's little hips on the side there. So this will go on like this. I'm just gonna move this spacer back a little bit so I can get some more grease in here. And then finally, we will fit our seal over the cover here. I'll pull you off, actually. And we've got our old bearing here we can use to just pound it in the rest of the way. Thousand uses, these old bearings. All right. Now we can slide this guy on. It'll slide into the seal. We've got a lot of extra grease here and that's a good thing. There it goes. See it squirting out around the splines. That's, that's a great sign. We are packed. All right, this grease around the outside we don't need. I'm gonna clean that off because that's just gonna end up in the brakes. I still feel like this flange needs to come in a little bit. I just don't feel like the whole assembly is quite pulled in all the way. So I just real quick like Bunny put on the drum here and I'm just going to use it to sort of pull the assembly together. There it goes, there it's seated. And there we go, our flange is quite a bit closer. That feels where it should be. And as I was running this nut in, it just absolutely stopped, which is what I would expect, and that's great. Well, I looked all over for a torque spec for these guys and couldn't really find one. So they just need to be, I think, sort of nipped up a bit and kind of tight, but don't go crazy on them. I think that feels pretty good. Well, you remember how it was when we started, that clicky-clicky. Let's see how we did. Oh my gosh, 
Yeah, nothing. So it's got no movement at all, which is what you'd expect. A wheel bearing really shouldn't have any play in it at all. In or out, up or down, just shouldn't, shouldn't have any play. So okay, well I think we did a good job on our bearings. Let's go ahead and get to those brakes. Well this episode's getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. We still have a bit of work to do on our Beetle. We've got brakes to do in the back here, and we've got some leaky output shafts on the transmission axles, so we need to get that sorted as well. And in addition, we've got other things to do. The shifting mechanism isn't quite right, and we have a new distributor to install, all sorts of stuff. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. Hit the little bell next to it to be notified, because you won't want to miss any content coming up on the Beetle. Oh, oh, and our 911 as well. So we've got the transmission should be coming home very shortly, and we're going to be getting all the new bits for the interior very shortly as well. Oh, look at that. The hub's back on. Huh. All right, well, if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. All right, well, until next time, safe travels. Bye.